All right, so we are getting ready to take some science notes. What I need y'all to do is to get this um, little packet thing that I handed out for us to do some cut and paste into our science notebook. So we are just doing the first page today. So the first thing we need to do is to get this page out of the packet. And the easiest way to do that is to just cut like right along here and that will release this paper from the rest of the packet without causing the other ones to come out of the staple. And then we're going to paste it into our science notebook. So you'll trim away like the white edges, put some glue on the back of the paper, and then just paste it right onto one of the pieces of paper in your notebook. All right, you can pause it and do that and then hit play when you're ready to move on to fill in the notes. So now we're going to fill in the notes. So um, on Friday, we were introduced to the different systems, just introduced to them. And now we're going to start focusing on them individually to learn more about each one of the um, body systems that we talk about in fifth grade. So the first one that I want to talk about is the skeletal system. And uh, you learned about this in third grade. I remember teaching some of you all the skeletal system in third grade. You will learn this again in seventh grade. I used to teach seventh grade too. And um, you'll go into more detail in seventh grade. In third grade, you just kind of touch the surface. And we go into a little bit more detail in fifth. And then in seventh grade, you go into even more detail. All right, so let's start with the skeleton. Move me out of the way. Can you go over here? So the skeleton, as you can see, this includes all the bones. So what I write, you're writing. You also can color this later because this is something I would want to color. It's very colorful. Um, not very colorful yet, but it looks like something that should be colorful. All right, it gives the body its shape and form. So I know I mentioned on Friday's video when I was introducing the skeletal system that without our bones, we would just be like a blob. We'd fall to the ground like a sack of potatoes. We would have no shape. So it's our skeleton, as you can see here, that um, gives us our shape. Also, ba bo bones. bones allow us to move. They work with our muscular system for movement. All right, so let's move over here. Since I just was talking about bones, I think it makes sense to move to this little section. All right, so our bones, let's see this little picture of a bone here. It says inside. Well, what's inside? Probably a lot of you think it's just hard all the way through. Hard on the outside, hard all the way inside. But that's not true. Inside of our bones, it's actually like a sponge, spongy. The outside, however, like you thought, is hard. Um, let me... I want to show you a picture of spongy bones bone. Let me move me out of the way again. Okay. So as you can see here, here's the hard outside, which they call compact bone, which is its technical name. And then on the inside, you have this spongy. You can even see the little holes, the little perforations in here. And then this picture right below it is a zoomed in version of that spongy bone. Okay. All right, back to this. So spongy, hard. Babies have 300 bones. However, adults only have 206. And that's not because our bones just disappear or vanish from when we're a baby. It's as we are growing, different bones start connecting together. They, they fuse. So what was once two separate bones becomes one bone stuck together. Um, okay. There are four different categories of bones. So every bone in our body falls into one of these categories, one and only one. 
So we have long bones. These are bones that are longer than they are wide. I'll show you a picture here in a second so you can visualize what this looks like. Short bones are wide as they are long. Flat bones are large strong and obviously flat and they protect organs. And lastly, this last category is for all of those bones that don't fit in as a long bone, sh short bone, or flat bone. So I'm just going to put the remainder. All right, I'm going to show a picture of these four different types. Okay, so first we talked about long bones, and remember we said they were longer than they are wide. You can see that here with the femur. The femur is the big old bone that's in our thighs. I was going to stand up, but even if I do, I'm so short, you won't see it on the camera. So think of your thigh. And if you press real firmly down in there, you can start feeling, well, if you press really hard, you might feel the bone. But it is, it's pretty deep in there. And But it is big. It is long, and it is longer than it is wide. So it is a long bone. Another long bone would be the humerus here in the upper arm. It looks a lot like the femur. You can see it right here. It's just smaller because our arms are smaller than our thighs. And um, it also is a long bone. The next one we talked about was short bones. And you can see here, remember that short bones are wide as they are long. And you can see here in the hand, we have these bones that are like, um, they're not long. They're just kind of almost square or rectangle-ish looking. Um, those would be our short bones. We um, also have flat bones, and you can see here that they are flat. Um, and this would be the sternum that's right here. And of course, that's protecting inside of our thoracic cavity. We have some pretty important organs in there. We have the heart um, right behind that. And so that's what it is protecting. And then we have irregular bones. Um, as you can see, this doesn't really look like the others. It's not flat. It's not long. It's not short. Um, this is a vertebrae and those are along our neck and down our back um, where our spine is. They also mention, if I know some of your parents might be watching like um, nurses and stuff, there is sesamoid bones too, but in fifth grade we don't really go into that. So that's why we didn't mention it. All right. Let's continue because I'm already at eight minutes here. Um, bone marrow can be found inside bones. What is bone marrow, you ask? Well, it makes red blood cells. Now, my sheet just says blood cells, but I do want to make a point to distinguish that we have different types of blood cells. And it's our immune system, one of the systems we don't talk about in fifth grade, that makes our white blood cells. So um, the bone marrow, which is deep inside our bones, are making red blood cells. It's very important for them to make red blood cells. So, um, and you might have heard of things like bone marrow transplants that people get when they have like leukemia um, and they need someone else's bone marrow to produce healthy blood cells. All right, off to the side, we have Three care tips for our mus not muscular skeletal system. So things we can do to take care of this system would be to eat healthy, to exercise, and to protect our bones. Moving along, fractured bones. Um, fractured bones are those that are broken. And 
what's really neat about them is they can heal themselves. All of you who have had broken bones, you know what I mean. They do. They repair themselves. They heal themselves by growing new cells. Our bones are living. They grow cells and they repair themselves when they're broken. It's pretty cool. All right, our skeletal system has three jobs, three functions. Functions, jobs, those are synonyms. Um, the first thing they do is they give, I'm going to turn this so I'm not having to write in a really awkward position. They give body its shape. I'm just going to put give body shape because I wrote it too big. They give the body its shape. We mentioned that um, up here as well. The second function that we're going to talk about is they protect our organs. I know I mentioned that Friday. I know I mentioned it a few minutes ago, but we have flat bones in our body, like in our skull, in our sternum. Um, these are bones that are designed to protect those fragile organs that are inside of our body that need to be protected because if they were injured, it would be very, very bad um, and a lot of times fatal for us. Number three, they allow movement. So it works, our skeletal system works with our muscular system. Um, so that we are able to move our hands and move our head and move our shoulders. Okay, last thing for the notes today. We are going to talk about these four terms here. These are also part of our skeletal system. Um, so we have our bones, but we also have these. So ligaments. This is tissue. Remember, I've told you what tissue is. So when you have a bunch of cells grouped together that are performing the same job, they form like a sheet or a band of cells, and that's called tissue. Ligaments are tissue that holds bones together. So like if you watch sports or anything, you might hear about an um, athlete who has damaged a ligament, torn a ligament. That's what they're referring to. They're referring to this tissue here that connects bones, one bone to another. All right. I want to skip to tendons next in the bottom right-hand corner. I feel like ligaments and tendons go together. Uh, tendons are also tissue. that connect bones to muscles. So that's the difference. You'll hear about athletes damaging their tendons as well. So the difference between a tendon and a ligament, they're both tissue, so that's a similarity. But what's different about them is that ligaments are the tissue that connects bones to bones. And tendons are the tissue that connects a bone to a muscle because remember the muscular system and the skeletal system they work together so that we can move so we have to have connections between the bones we have to have connections between the bone bones and our muscles and those tissue are the coordination between the bones and the muscular system so that we can move all right joints these are areas where bones meet. All right, we know about our joints. We have joints in our fingers. We can crack our joints. Yes, that was kind of gross, wasn't it? Um, our elbow is a joint. Um, we have joint in our leg, so where our legs bend. All right, and we have cartilage. It's kind of faint where I wrote this. 
Um, firm tissue found on the body. Firm tissue found in the body. Now, I remember some of you might be surprised about this, but um, I did go to nursing school for a couple semesters, and I did very well, but then I got pregnant, so then I decided to go and become a teacher. Um, so one of the things that I remember from nursing school is talking about cartilage, and I know we have cartilage in our nose. We got cartilage here um, where our earlobe is, but I recall that it's not. there's not a lot of cartilage in our body. So it's kind of this um, flexible stuff right here, like on our earlobes and at the tip of our nose. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is the Google form that goes with these notes. So this is going to prove that you took your notes today. Um, if I can find it. Of course, I'd probably exit it out. So let me go back in. So when you open yours, it's going to look like this. You're probably already on the screen. So the first question is asking us three functions of the skeletal system, and so you would need to ref to this triangle here and it's asking which one is not a function so these three guys are choices and then there's one up there that's not mentioned around this triangle and that's the one you need to pick number two. Ooh, my phone scared me which of the following is true about bones so which of these is true Bone is spongy on the inside and hard on the outside. Bone is hard both on the inside and outside. Bone is spongy both on the inside and outside. Or bone is spongy on the outside and hard on the inside. And of course, we talked about that right here. Number three, which term matches this definition? Area where bones meet. And that was from this cute little skeleton guy down here. There are four different terms. And we're looking for areas where bones meet. So it's either ligaments, joints, tendons, or cartilage. Same thing for number four. Which term matches this de definition? Tissue that holds bones together. Um, I should say bones. I'm going to go in and fix that. So would that be ligaments, cartilage, joints, or tendons? Number five, which term matches this definition? Tissue that connects muscle to bone. So we're going to that same little skeleton guy down here in the corner and see which one is tissue that connects muscle to bone. Number six, which type of bone is wide as it is long? Long bones, short, flat, or irregular? Um, so we're looking for wide as it is long, and there are our four choices right there. Number seven, where can bone marrow be found? We talked about bone marrow right here, so it'll tell you where we found it, or where we can find it if you wrote it down. Number eight, what color is my shirt in this video? And so if you're watching the video, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you it's dark blue. I know it's hard to tell because it's dark in the room and the shirt is dark, but it's obviously not bright red, neon green, or hot pink. And that's just another way I'm using to check to see who is watching this video to the end and, and doing what I'm asking them to do. All right, so this is due by 11.59 tonight. Tuesday should be 1.12. I'm going to fix that too. Tuesday, 112, um, due by 11.59 tonight. If you need any help or anything, um, I know Ms. Howard and I are in a meeting during study hall, but we'll be out of the meeting, and then we'll be able to help you as necessary. All right.